Well, of course, we're smack dab in the middle of football season, but we are right on the cusp of basketball season. Happy to be joined by LSU women's basketball head coach Kim Mulkey. Coach, thanks for joining us first off, and the season gets going tomorrow night. How excited are you to finally kick this year off? I'm getting old, Cobble. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe that another year is here, and uh, my summers go by too fast, you know. They say it's kind of like the end of a roll of toilet paper. You know, the older you get, the faster that roll starts disappearing. I hadn't heard that one. Um, no, but seriously, I'm excited. And uh, we've got certainly uh, a lot of um, excitement. I just heard today that we have now sold out the arena. And uh, that's just so good. It's so good for our players and our school and our program. And, uh, it's going to be fun. I've got a lot of depth at the guard spot and um, got just enough post to yeah. create a little havoc and uh, we're still relevant and that's what I came here to yeah. do. Preseason ranked seventh, I think, in the country. Great spot to be, you know, room to improve, I guess. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the positions and the girls on the team a little bit. I, I, I'm just curious, though, life without Angel, right? This is going to be your first year without it. What is that going to be like for you? Uh, it's it. it I mean, I'm sure there's gonna, it's going to be different. It's got to be different, right? Well, I've had many seasons without Angel, That's true. even here. Our first year here uh, was so successful. Uh, Kayla Pointer and Jalen Cherry and all those young ladies who stayed here and could have left and gone in the transfer portal. And what a wonderful year they had, finished second in the league and uh, hosted the first and second rounds. So um, you wish you could keep Angel, you wish you could keep all the players forever, but uh, they move on to that next phase of their life. And we're certainly proud of her and uh, proud of Alexis Morris and Jasmine Carson and all those that have that ring, LaDasia Williams. And uh, those young ladies have memories and hopefully the, the new bunch this year came here to do what they did. Absolutely, a little passing of the torch already. We we're seeing some of that spotlight shine on Flage Johnson and Issa Morrow, SEC preseason players of the year on the same team. I mean, tied for that, that's that's pretty remarkable. And what we've seen them do in the exhibition season already has been pretty remarkable. Not surprising. I think anyone would tell you when you watch Flage play, she just plays with a joy about her. And she's just gotten so much better every year. I thought during the playoffs last year, she's, if not the top guard in the country, she was one of the top guards. And uh, and then of course, we only had Morrow the first year last year and look at the impact that she had, especially when Samaya Smith went down, she filled in and uh, is like we didn't miss a beat. And for them to be recognized and acknowledged uh, it's not surprising. They should be. We've talked a little bit about Flage and the defense that she's shown over her first couple of seasons here and how it's continued to improve. We all know she can score the ball. What are you looking for her? Is it leadership? Maybe an intangible that you're looking at for Flage? I think for Flage and for Anissa Morrow, you said it. We have to have leadership in that locker room. We have to have it on the court. And those are the two most experienced players that we have. And they need to understand being a leader is hard. It's not easy. You can't just bring it today and, and not tomorrow. It's every day. And leadership has nothing to do with your ability to score the basketball or to defend or to rebound. Leadership is, is it, it's a position where people want to follow you because you're consistent in everything that you do. No matter if it's your worst day, you still give the same effort every day and uh, leadership is going to be a, a big uh, question mark for our team this year. Anissa, do you think she benefits from having a little bit more help in the post this year with Jersey, the addition of Jersey Wolfenberger? I think just Anissa being in the system for a year, she's going to be more relaxed, more comfortable. Uh, she knows this is her last year. She knows her why, <laughs> why she came here. And I think you're going to see her have a great year. Let's talk about Michaela Williams. You know, obviously such a phenomenal freshman season. Your expectations for her, she's still trying to, I would guess, find her game in the college realm. It's hard as a freshman to come in at the level we play at and be that impact player. But yet I thought Michaela had spurts of, she's a phenomenal player, but she had spurts. She had her bad moments, she had her good moments, but you can see that she's just a great, great player and uh, she is uh, more comfortable. Um, I think that, um, you know, Flage and then her, they both got to play and start as freshmen, and that's unusual. Uh, I think we're gonna have enough depth 
to not have to use Michaela when she's extremely tired. Give her a break. And if we can do that and get production, then it makes us a better team. Can we three-peat SEC uh, freshman of the year? <laughs> Jada Richard, you know, well, some, some tough, tough uh, competition let's there. Let's talk about Jada. You know, Jada and Michaela went head-to-head -head a lot in high school. So uh, they're good buds and they challenge each other. And I'm so glad that we're able to keep the homegrown the talent girls, yeah. here at LSU. You talked about the guards earlier, just the team going to look a little different, I assume, with that, that many guards. And does the pace of play quicken? Are you kind of getting to what you really like to see here? Well, I've always liked to run. Yeah. I'm, I'm not one that wants to walk the ball up. I didn't want to play like that when I was playing. And it just depends on the personnel that you have. They may be teams that I've had that would push it, but we're just not quite as quick as some other teams. And I think this year you're going to see uh, the young people we brought in, the young players we brought in from other programs that have athleticism, speed, and quickness. And we're going to get up and down the floor. Is it the depth, really, that could be the difference for you? Oh, oh. without a question. Yeah. Definitely. I think uh, depth is uh, and, and quality depth. Okay. You know, I tell them all the time, I can't start but five. Right. That means nothing to me. Uh, what matters to me is you get in that eight and nine rotation and be impactful during the course of a game. Is that more work for your bench coaches now to kind of really get you a rotation that you like? No, and work it's with? it's not work. It's it's what we do. Uh, you know, when you recognize someone needs a breather, you should have a, a plan in place that you know who you're subbing for. Uh, what distracts you sometimes and, and knocks you out of whack is injuries, mm -hmm. is the injury bug. And I think uh, we didn't have enough depth the last couple of years that when a, a nagging injury hit, uh, we didn't fill that spot with the same quality of talent. Quality depth, I got you. Let's talk about the post a little bit. Uh, Aaliyah Del Rosario, I believe, coming back from injury. Where is she at in that process? How much can Jersey really compliment her there? And what do you think in the post? Well, let's talk about Samaya Smith. Okay. You know, when Samaya Smith got hurt last year, she was averaging almost a double-double and playing just really good basketball. So we now have Samaya back. She's healthy. She's been going through the preseason with us. She hasn't missed uh, any practices. Um, you know, she's just got bad knees, and we're going to have to make sure that we monitor that and we do uh, what we need to do to keep her healthy all year. Aaliyah has had two ankle surgeries now. She just has an ankle that's just um, always needs to be cleaned up. And, uh, you know, she's been practicing with us for two weeks now, and uh, she looks better each day. She looks, gets in better shape, and uh, uh, she has to play for us. She has that size and that bulk to be able to bang with the big girls across the country, and uh, we'll get her there. But um, uh, Jersey is a transfer that's in there, the mix with uh, height. Jersey is um, not quite as physical as Aaliyah, but Jersey, uh, uh, she's, she's a young lady that um, I recruited out of high school when I was at Baylor and knew about her. And when she set out last year at Arkansas, as soon as we could talk to her and she got in the portal, we did and we got her. I think Amani uh, is a senior. She's having her best preseason, but that's because she's comfortable. She knows the system. And she's one of our better leaders right now. Really? That's great. Great to get that leadership, especially from a senior, mm -hmm. especially from a, a girl who's waited her turn and really worked her turn and, and now has a chance to contribute at a good level. Uh, pick third, I think, in the SEC. Uh, tell me your thoughts on the conference right away. I guess I think South Carolina and Texas obviously joining is, is going to make things difficult. Well, I think OU and Texas joining our league in women's basketball just elevated it even more. Uh, there are going to be some outstanding games, and um, what I think that'll do for our league is uh, make us at the end of the season have more that are picked for the NCAA tournament, which is good. Um, I don't know, third, fifth, sixth, it doesn't matter. You got to go play the games, and uh, we've been fortunate since I've been here to finish second in the league. I've always thought the fair thing to say is finish in the upper half of the league and um, beat people you're not supposed to beat occasionally and win the games you're supposed to win and um, get to the NCAA tournament and see what happens. And uh, I think that we have a, a group that, that's got a lot of growing to do together, but I think the talent is there. Yeah. Did you guys pick your uh, dig deep roots was last year's motto? Did you all pick a motto already? 
Uh, we did, okay. and uh, that, keep it in, in house for now. Well, I guess we can. Um, you know, it's it's ring the alarm. It's like don't wait, don't sleep through it. Okay. Uh, these are the greatest years of your life in college, and uh, be be impactful in your life every day. And when you step on this floor, do something memorable. And when you do, whether it's a great play, a great defensive play, a big win, uh, and in practice, when we do good things, I tell them run over there and ring the alarm. Do you have a bell to practice? You got you know? it. Is we that, do. That's awesome. We do. Uh, tell me about your your fellow Hall of Famer now. What's it like having Simone Augustus on the staff? And I know it's early in her coaching career, right? But uh, what do you see in her? And like, how much are you? You know, taking her aside and giving her little nuggets every now and again. Well, let me let me talk about the team before I okay. get to Simone. I want to talk about Miracle Shepherd. I want to talk about Shia Wilson, and I want to talk about Kaylin Gilbert. We all know about Izzy, our local young lady who's a walk-on. She's just just a good person. Just we love Izzy, and Izzy's just she's itching to get on the floor. She's dealing with some heart issues right now, but those other three that I just mentioned. Those young ladies bring athleticism, they bring speed and quickness, and Miracle especially brings an unbelievable um, defensive mind. Uh, she's a sight to watch defensively. Now she's gonna be out these first couple of weeks with a stress reaction, not a fracture, but we're gonna be very conservative there because she plays such good defense. And I think those young ladies, and then Poa, you know, we talked about last year, Poa, we got to get her straight with some issues off the floor to get back on the floor. And, um, you know, that, that's a lot of depth. That's a lot of depth at the guard spot. And uh, we just got to get them all on the floor. We got to get them all healthy and see what happens. You talked about defense. I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Perimeter defense, is that something that Well, the, our is... perimeter defense is, is good. Mm -hmm. Our defense is okay. Uh, I thought there were lapses last year that cost us in games. I thought there were turnovers in games that cost us. Um, but I think we have some speed and quickness that when we're not good and we get beat off the dribble, we can catch up because of that athleticism. Um, so I'm, I'm anxious to see them. You know, I've seen them for a couple months now in practice. I'm anxious for the lights to come on and for me to watch them because it never fails to happen that those players in practice that aren't good practice players, they take it to a whole different level when the lights come on. And so I'm anxious to see what happens when we do that. Uh, now, Simone, sure, let's talk, talk about, about Simone. I tried to hire her a year ago when we retired, or not retired, but when we had her statue unveiling and she wasn't ready. And then when Johnny Derrick, oh, you talk about uh, gonna miss somebody. Johnny has seen every game I've ever coached and um, he wanted to retire a year ago and I talked him out of it and I told him to groom the young people in the office and teach them what you do every day. And he did and then he retired. So I had the position open and I called Simone and I said, your responsibilities will be different than Johnny's. And here's what we would like for you to do because the rules have changed now. I can have more than just the four go on the road recruiting and on the floor um, teaching and that was very interest made her very interested in the job. And Simone has um, been inducted into every Hall of Fame the last year and so worthy of it and uh, won't ever forget her um, Naismith Hall of Fame. I won't even call it a speech. Right, her, I don't know if you call it a spoken poem. word. Yeah, I, mean. I don't know what you call it, but I told her uh, Maya Angelou would uh, love to have heard that because it reminded me of how she spoke and it showed you the love she has for our state. And um, she didn't do too much. And she thanked everybody and acknowledged everybody that ever played with her and coached her. And um, what a, just what a great moment that was for, for her, her family, for LSU and watching her every day in staff meetings. I think that she could probably say this best, but she just laughs at me. Uh, she's just like, nobody sees this side of you. And I just tell her, shh, don't tell anybody. But we have fun and uh, we sure are grateful that she's with us. Yeah, I don't remember if you were in on with Pat, you know, recruiting her when she was at Capitol High. But this version of Simone is like night and day to me. Like she's, 
just speaks. Yes. And she didn't talk a lot when she right. was younger. And, and right. to hear her deliver that speech was remarkable, like you said. But just to have her so effortlessly, you know, flow it out of her, it was, it was incredible. I'm really excited to see this version of Simone as she goes. I'm excited to see this version of the women's basketball team. I'm excited to see what type of play y'all put out there. I think that depth is going to be really fun to watch as it evolves. And, and you've said that it's always a progression, right? You want to be playing better in January than you are now. Absolutely. And February better, you know. Absolutely. So. You don't compare teams. Look, winning championships, a national championship, coaches coach a lifetime and never win one. I can name you so many great coaches that never won one. I've been blessed now to have one at LSU, three at Baylor, and I know this, we are relevant in women's basketball. And when I came here, I wanted to win a championship. We've done that, but now the hard part is to stay relevant, stay up there and being talked about in women's basketball, continue to recruit those classes, and we are. We're going to continue to recruit. LSU is easier to recruit to than people realize. Stay hungry. Ring that alarm. I like it. The Lady Tigers, excuse me, the women's basketball team, old habits die hard, taking on Eastern Kentucky Monday night at 7 o'clock. You can support the team, be a part of the Fast Break Club. I think you're going to have a luncheon here pretty soon Thank next you. week as well. So get in on that if you want and stick around because we have more countdown to kickoff coming up after this.